So today we are going to talk about SOLIDWORKS performance models, uh, assembly models, and what uh, components are impacting us the most and how we can go about cleaning those up, fixing those, identifying them so that we can get better performance out of our assemblies, uh, especially as the size of assemblies continue to grow. Uh, we are seeing very, very large assemblies and uh, it is a common, common problem. So this, uh, this file set that we are going to take a look at is from a customer of ours. This came across my plate uh, while I was working support. Uh, and basically the customer got it to the point where he could no longer open the files. So he had this data set he called in because he can no longer even get the data to open. All right, so naturally we took a look, we found a quick solution and as you can see, it's very simple, but complex, okay? Uh, a lot, we can see lots of rollers, lots of uh, just uh, mechanical mechanisms, but what we work with is really in the details here. So we're gonna take a look and dive into this and figure out what impacted this assembly. So the first thing we do, we take a look at this, and the zip file he sends over is 238 megs. That's a, that's a pretty sizable assembly. All right, and break it down a little bit further. We grab this information out of the pack and go. It's got 73 assembly files, 453 part files. So we're right around 500 parts. Now, when we open this up and actually work with it, we're working with an assembly that's about 1,500 components. So one of the first things we always look at and we always figure out is what version that we're working with. We've got files from uh, all sorts of different versions, and we can find that very simply by using Windows Explorer. You right-click on a file, you take a look at it, go to Properties, and in our columns, all right, so I was added a function, uh, some additional columns that we are now able to access. They've got now the SOLIDWORKS last saved with and the SOLIDWORKS opening time. So if I turn that column on, I'm gonna be able to look down my list when I look at it in a detail format, and we are going to see every version that that file, that assembly data set is using. And then because it's Windows, we can sort it and we find that we've got most of it in 2016, uh, but we're going to find that we've got files in 2015, uh, 2014, there's even some 2013 files in here. And why does that make a difference to us? Older format files have to be converted every time they're opened. All right, so any version of SOLIDWORKS updates information in that header file. All right, so it's updating information, it's changing, recompressing the data. All right, uh, that brings us to our second point there. In 2015, SOLIDWORKS changed the compression format uh, that we use. It makes it a little bit harder for other uh, competitors to get data, but it also compressed that data. We saw drastic file size reductions in 2015, uh, as much as 50, maybe even 75% in some cases. So we get a much smaller format. And if we have to, there is a, our task scheduler gives us batch processing capabilities. So we can do this in an automated format. And if we update these and get them on the latest version, then we're not wasting that time doing it on demand. But jump into SOLIDWORKS. And let's take a look at this assembly. This top level. Right, the new dialog, open dialog box, uh, came to us in 18. Uh, it's also there in 19. Uh, it gives us that information, gives us a little more uh, direct visibility to what's going on while it's opening these files. Uh, so we can see exactly what, uh, what component uh, it's open on and the amount of time that's elapsed. First thing we want to do is we want to get this open. I am doing it fully resolved. Just avoid resolving the components in the next step. But there are multiple modes of, of opening the files. Uh, large assembly, lightweight, uh, that's going to help reduce the amount of data that's loaded into the system and it will decrease the, the overall opening time. So now we did not go through this assembly uh, and remove uh, every error um, that the customer had. Our goal here was to uh, get the, uh, the best performance out of there. 
is my cursor. Get a second. I'll still be loading something. All right, this uh, this little uh, dialog box is new in 2019. We all get these little whiteout screens, and uh, it is now telling us uh, what and showing us what is going on in the background. First thing I want to do is open up the Assembly uh, Performance Evaluation Tool. 2018, they enhanced this a great deal for us, and this gives us a lot of information right up front. Uh, 2019, the enhancement is they gave us direct ability to open files from the screen. So at the, uh, the top of my screen is giving me a breakdown of the file opening, telling us the amount of previous version files. Right in the information in the middle of this is giving us graphic triangles. The graphic triangles uh, has a direct correlation, direct impact on your assembly performance. So they are flagging uh, the stuff that we did manually and we've done manually for years. They are now providing it right here in the report and they are identifying the, the highest number of total triangles. There are definitely items that we want to focus in on. Uh, performance rebuild is also going to identify mates uh, that are causing per, uh, performance problems. Uh, in context mates, um, it's telling us whether we're using the large assembly modes or not. Um, and then gives you a full breakdown of the tool of your assembly. What we found if we take a look at the assembly visualization tools, the components at the top of our list. Uh, we find that we have uh, a helical spring and when I look at my document properties, the image quality slider, so tools, options, document properties, image quality, our top slider effects are shaded model views. If we take a look here, that slider is all the way over to the right end in that red zone. All right, now that red zone, uh, you can consider it a high definition, all right? It is really cranking down the deviations, but that causes slower performance and file growth component was a thumb screw. All right, we opened this up and we found that there were uh, helical threads uh, modeled into the part, as well as the image quality being cranked all the way up in the red zone. Helical threads uh, are a big, big performance hit to us. And on top of that, this thumb screw had a cut pattern into the, uh, the grip of the screw. Uh, so we can uh, suppress out the helix and take out the pattern, uh, and we can replace those with graphics, with decal graphics and get the same appearance, but take away all of the helical geometry. For a number of uh, pipe nipples with helical threads cut on both ends. Okay. Again, these files cranked all the way up into our red zone on the image quality. So again, we, we suppressed out the helical thread. And what I like to do is create configurations. Uh, if I create a simplified configuration, then I can automate that process and tell SOLIDWORKS to open up the simplified configuration in my assembly if it exists in my components. So if I get into a practice of building that configuration in every component and simplifying down my geometry, then SOLIDWORKS can automate the process of pulling those into our assemblies. Another uh, helical thread. This uh, particular one was used more than 40 times in the assembly. All right, we worked on another assembly. We had uh, more than 200 instances of the same fastener, okay? So part after part after part, we go through this thing and we get helical threads and helical geometry uh, throughout this. Another big area that we find that really impacts our overall performance is flexible sub-assemblies. So what we wanna do, we, everybody likes to see their assembly move and there's good reason to 
have moving geometry so that we can look at the range of motion and make sure that we have all the clearances we need, okay? Now, one of the goals of top-level assembly modeling is to minimize the number of top-level mates. So by, by minimizing the top-level mates and pushing mates down into sub-assemblies, we get more optimal performance. Now, we use sub-assemblies, we can use patterns. If we take those sub-assemblies and we make them flexible so they can now move, we're essentially taking all those mates at that sub-assembly level and we're solving them back up at the top level. So now, this assembly has 171 top-level mates and on 1,500 components, that's not too bad. But we're adding to that 430 mates that have to solve every time this rebuilds. So we're solving over 500 mates just because we have flexible sub-assemblies. Another problem that we, we uh, often have is our imported geometry. Now we all go out to the web, we all get files from our customers, and it is very common practice to save those out as neutral files. Okay. Kind of protects the data, doesn't give everybody our feature history, and when we import those in, okay, we need to heal them up. So we're translating data from one system to another, so we're kind of changing that background information and reading it in. Okay, now this part uh, looked very good. Uh, I came in clean, it even came in as a solid. Okay, but if I run the import diagnostic on here, it tells me there's actually two bad surfaces, okay? So there's some little issue, uh, probably between the way the edges line up, uh, that causes us problems. So the import diagnostics is an automated tool that will heal that geometry, okay? And if we don't heal up that geometry, it's causing that underlying problem. Those are the ones we can't see um, I have seen uh, simulation studies that won't even solve uh, because of underlying imported geometry problems. All right, so we do need to bring it in. We do need to run that import diagnostic and fix up that geometry. If that part imports as surfaces, then SOLIDWORKS counts each individual surface against us because it's got to calculate each one rather than calculating it as one solid body. Okay, so that almost treats each surface like a part, increasing our rebuild counts. So the common thing that we come across is the word helical. Okay? Helical threads, helical springs, internal helical cut threads. Okay, I see them all over the place. If it's helical, it's gonna hammer our performance. Okay. So we try to avoid those as much as we can. All right, so in, in simplifying, we wanna remove those. And the idea is that the more we show in the assembly, the less detail you need to see, okay? We need to see the detail in the piece part so that we can make it the right way. But when we stick more and more components into assembly and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you actually see less of that detail. All right? So faces and geometry that you can't even see from the exterior don't need to be seen. This one uh, is, is probably one of my favorites. All right, ball bearings. We go in and probably download this uh, from any number of sources on the web, and we stick it into our assembly, and I think it's great. I just opened an assembly that had 266 ball bearing files in them, and they were actual double ball bearings, so they had two sets of raceways 
complete with 16 balls in each. Okay. So if we look at our solid bodies folder, we actually have 15 solid bodies in this part. That is essentially counting 15 parts in a single file. All right. So I could go in there. We can see that the image quality actually was not set that bad on this file. It's actually right where we recommend having it. But you got all that round geometry, all that internal geometry that has to be calculated every time we rotate this part. So how do we clean this one up? Well, I can simply delete the bodies, delete the balls, and get rid of them. But that still leaves me here with probably about four or five different solid bodies. I can merge those bodies together, but that still leaves the internal raceway geometry. So an even better solution is just to go in and extrude solid geometry right through the middle of this thing, fill it in, so that the whole thing is solid, and we just have this revolved geometry. Okay. Clean that up, and that is the most simple geometry. I just have the, a little bit of the exterior to worry about. Extruded text. Everybody wants our labels. Uh, this is another performance killer. Okay. Anytime we extrude cuts, we extrude it or uh, emboss it or deboss it. Uh, that is creating tiny little sliver faces that we have to triangulate and calculate when we uh, when we rotate this. So again, uh, this was the only part in this assembly that had a company logo that I found, right? But this is probably uh, in internal and probably a bunch of these slammed right next to each other. And that's going to be detail that we're not going to see anyways. So to simplify this file, we're just going to simple, put some simple extrudes right through that geometry and fill it in, merge it into the solid. And a little trick on the back, um, we can take the existing geometry, uh, copy it with a sketch. So convert all those entities to a sketch then fill it in, and instead of extruding cuts, we can actually just split the face using the split line command. And splitting the face just divides one face into multiple faces. Um, that gives us the same visual effect. Uh, again, if that detail is even necessary. All right, uh, we can we can color the face, give it a little contrast. And uh, we avoid having that depth. And everybody extrudes that only uh, two or three thousandths, maybe five thousandths. All right, so we want to get away from that wherever possible. So this is another example. Uh, we, we see this all the time on various control panels. Everybody takes and outlines their sketch. They extrude that in uh, five or ten thousandths, um, and it looks great. But it sends our graphical count through the roof. So a little trick here is to suppress all those cuts. Uh, but in, before I do that, I'm going to use my snipping tool. So either use the window snipping tool or a snag it tool, and I'm going to take a screenshot. So I'm going to go normal to my panel. I'm going to take a screenshot of it and save that image file. And when I go back into this file, I remove all my cuts. So now it's just a uh, rectangular extrude, and I'm going to apply a decal to the face. And that detail is the image of my panel, and it looks exactly like the uh, like the cut panel, except now it's a graphic, and I have no depth, and graphics are very, very light on performance. And we get that same overall uh, labeled appearance with our assembly. So that one's going to help perform it. So. 
Uh, real quick, since it's going to behave here for a minute, I will go ahead and, and if we zoom in here, we can see all that detail uh, cut into the part. With my uh, simplified version, okay, use my decal. But now if I zoom in, we see that there it gets a little, little bit fuzzy because it's just an image. And that's very, very lightweight on us. So if I take my simplified configuration and go back to our main assembly, under my configurations, I'm going to click Advanced. Okay. Little dialog box comes up, and the last checkbox, I can tell it to use my simplic simplified configuration if available. Now we can see that an assembly that took about a minute and a half or two minutes to open before, we already got that open close to 40 seconds. So there we can see right off the bat, there is my uh, panel that we just look, took a look at. And it has substituted and put in all of our simplified geometry automatically. There's our helical spring. And our helical spring, we extruded a solid cylinder through that geometry to take away the internal rounded features of it. So I promise if you, uh, if you take these steps, you take the extra time to clean up your geometry, use, use common practice, use simplified configurations, and use that. It all starts with the individual part files. And as our assemblies grow, that performance gets hit exponentially. So it's a single part gets put into assembly, and that subassembly goes into the next assembly. So they keep stacking and building on top of each other. So it's very important that we do take the steps to clean up uh, the geometry from the get-go and it'll make our lives a lot easier down the road. Okay, Brian, looks like we've got some questions here. Absolutely. Um, I have looked into the SOLIDWORKS add-ins to improve SOLIDWORKS startup performance. Are there any other things I can do to quicken the opening of SOLIDWORKS? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, right, turning off the add-ins is definitely a help. Um, trying to turn off anything that we don't need to open. Um, SOLIDWORKS does load a bunch of DLs, uh, DLL files, uh, SOLIDWORKS fast start, um, so it, that is a process to help it open. Uh, we have seen some issues with some antivirus programs um, that are known to affect the opening times. Um, so one trick uh, or one task might be to disable your antivirus to see if that uh, has any direct correlation. Um, okay. And, and your uh, tech support can always uh, help you dig further into that. Okay, Here, here's one. I'll go ahead and fill this one. It says, is there any way to dimension a decal such that it defines the height of the text? Um, not really. Um, one of the things that I do when I work with decals, if I need a specific size for said decal, I will do a split line on the surface, and that split line will be the exact size I want the decal to be. And when I apply the decal, I'll go into the mapping of the decal, and I'll tell it to fit the selection that it's, it's placed upon. So that's, that's one way I work around that. 
Um, there's a question of how is the text simplified on the control panel? Um, I'm assuming we, we converted that just to a text and showed the text, right, Brian? Yeah, for that panel was just a, a, a JPEG screenshot and um, and then applied as a decal just to match the uh, the whole size of the of the part. See if okay. I can jump back. See if I can jump back and bring that. So up while you you jump in there, you mentioned that you didn't need details in parts when in an assembly. So do you suppress features in the part level, or you do that, or do or do something else to make a simplified configuration without the details to use in the configuration of the assembly, um, or you do something else. Um, one, Brian, sometimes will create a simplified config where he just suppresses that information. And then sometimes, depending on what it is, we might do a D feature and um, have the assembly reference a D featured file instead. There's some nice new stuff in there. Absolutely, um, yeah, and, that, and that's found under the tools menu, tools the feature, and that's been around since 2011, and not everybody knows that that function really exists there. It is a, a tool that will help dumb down an assembly file, take away internal geometry, but the nice thing is it allows you to keep important reference geometry that you want to have, like bolt hole circles, um, and, and we can kind of preserve some of that information. is use specified configurations when available text box case sensitive. Um, no, it's not. Let's no, but I think see. good practice is, is try to be consistent of course. Uh, in, in your parts. Be, because it's programming, you know, we, a lot of cases it's not sensitive, but then we'll run across that one instance where it is, you know, so, if you can get yourself, just try to be consistent. It just makes it easier. Can a decal be saved within a part, or does it have to be a separate file? Yes. Um, there is a yes. system option for that. Yep. So if I go into my system options, uh, the document property, um, model display, and right down at the bottom is to store the appearance decal or scene files uh, internal to the file. Okay. All right. Good. So that does add a little bit of file size, but it is a good way to keep it uh, contained. So when updating legacy files to the latest SOLIDWORKS version, can a batch file work in with um, SOLIDWORKS um, PDM systems? Yes, it can. Um, you can use SOLIDWORKS Dispatch inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM to, to upgrade those legacy files. Um, there's also, if you don't have SOLIDWORKS PDM, there's actually a, in the task scheduler, inside of SOLIDWORKS task scheduler, there's a tool to upgrade and convert files as well, which is also very beneficial. So that one comes in pretty handy. There was also a question earlier about the, the column in Windows Explorer for SOLIDWORKS last saved with. Um, can that be done in SOLIDWORKS PDM? And if you're a PDM user, that's a yes. You just have to go into the Vault Admin under Columns. Inside of Columns in the Vault Admin, there is Columns for Explorer, and you can add that in, and that'll be available for everybody, which is kind of nice. Um, let's see here. It says, on some SOLIDWORKS screens, it shows frames per second and rebuild times. Um, that's actually a a little little hack that I did in the registry. You, um, I plan on putting that out on a blog. But um, Brian, could you bring up RegEdit for a second? Sure thing. So this registry key is found in your H key current user folder. You're going to go to software, SolidWorks. And you're going to click on the current version that you're using. So Brian's on 2019 right now, so he's going to go into there. And it's going to be under performance. And I believe, do a search inside this folder. I believe it's OpenGL. 
and there is um, display, actually it's um, OpenGL print statistics. This is set to zero. If you change that to one, it will show you your frame count, um, how many math, um, um, video card rebuilds are being done. So you can see how many frames per second the video card is actually cranking out the SOLIDWORKS. Um, I use this for when I'm doing video card testing. So I can see, do I ha am I getting drop frames? What am I getting? So um, it, it's not very intrusive. You have it at the bottom of the user interface. I have it on quite a bit, but you have to reboot SOLIDWORKS to have it, have it running. But that's, that's not a big deal. It's just a restart. I will be putting that up as a blog. Um, I might just publish that Monday morning first thing. So if you go to blog.cuti.com, I'll walk through the process of actually turning that on because some people have been asking to see what the new performance pipeline in SOLIDWORKS 2019 does for their machine. So it would be kind of nice to see those numbers directly. So I'm going to uh, create a blog article probably this afternoon, and I'll publish it for Monday. So. So let's see here. Any other questions? These are really good questions, right, Brian? Absolutely. Absolutely. When using cosmetic threads, is there any way to make it show the correct thread pitch? Not really. Not that I've seen. Um, it's just there to kind of illustrate that that face is has a cosmetic. I mean, has a thread associated with it. But I mean, you got to take in consideration it's pixels, so. Even if we got it close, you wouldn't be able to measure to it anyways. If you're doing a thread decal, you can you can play with the scaling of the uh, the image file so it can look uh, yeah. coarser or finer. Um, yeah, you'd have to you have to get the dimensions just right. But yeah, you could probably do it. Yeah, I, I I would just more more use it as I can show a fine pitch thread versus a, a coarse thread, uh, which which gives it that closer appearance. Yeah, I mean, if if I really wanted to see it for like drawing purposes or something, I mean, like Toolbox has it has where it can display just the shank or the shank with cosmetic threads, or it has the schematics option where it just gives you it's the proper pitch and everything, but it's not really pitched. It's just a pattern of one cut all the way down. And what that's for is if you want to cut a section view through. It looks like it, but it's actually not helical pitch. It's just a linear pattern of, of circular rings. Um, if you wanted to see that actual profile or drawing, that's probably be the best way. What else you got for us, Bob? Um, let's see. I've got one more here. We've got time for one more because we got some other WebExes that are going to be popping up on this channel here in a little bit. Um, I haven't used the D feature tool. Will it replace a helical thread with a cosmetic thread? No, but that's a darn good enhancement request. Um, that that would be a that'd be a kind of a cool one to see. Right now, um, with 2019, I mean, they added some really good stuff in there where you can pick certain models and you say replace this model with a cylinder, replace this one with a profile, replace this one with a projected silhouette. They've got quite a bit in there with the new D feature tool, but. Nothing as advanced as saying, if I see a helix replaced with a cosmetic thread, I think that'd be really cool, though. Um, it would, it like would be it. interesting to see what that mathematical model would be to, to to figure out is, do I have any threads on here? So that'd be that'd be an interesting one to find out. Yeah, I, I agree. I, um, I had a couple people just pop in and say, I think that'd be great. Um, definitely file the enhancement requests. Um, I'll do it, too. I'll SolidWorks wants to hear from you guys. I mean, that's where that's what drives it. And the uh, I mean, more like, of you that, that submit those enhancements, the uh, the better chance we'll see that kind of function come. And and thank you, Joe. We Joel, we appreciate it. Um, we do try to pack a lot of good information in a short period of time. It's a little longer than we expected, but yeah. I mean, you guys are asking good questions. Is there a webinar on how the file, how to file that type of request? Oh, okay. I mean, I could probably log in right now and show you how to do it. Just give me one second. So here's the main page of SOLIDWORKS.com. You will click on this button right here in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll go to SOLIDWORKS Customer Portal. Okay. Once you get done at the so logging in the SOLIDWORKS Customer Portal, it will present you with the SOLIDWORKS Customer Portal, which is right here. 
And um, under my support, there is an enhancement request. So I'm going to click on enhancement request, and I'm going to file that request right now. So D feature to what he's going to do is search for an existing enhancement. So if there's Let's an see, existing, feature it back onto it. Threads. So if what it'll do is if it doesn't find anything. So click here and watch short video, um, refine my search. Okay, so I didn't find anything, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and then I will pick the category that I'm looking at here. So I'm just going to look and see, let's see. Probably assembly? No, oh, it's part, so probably features. Uh, let's just go with assembly. So they'll, they'll pick it up somewhere. And I'm just going to put in other here, and I'm just going to product version. Let's just go with the current version. It doesn't have 19 in there yet, but um, would like D feature to support converting threads or helical shapes. to cosmetic threads. Now, if you have any files that you want to attach, you can attach those there. So this would make visualization of simplified assemblies that much more robust. Let's go into a product manager. They got to have some sort of marketing spin on it. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And then what that will do is it will, if I click, I can review my enhancement requests. And you'll have a list of them. So you can see I've got one here that was, was closed. And I'm actually, all mine have been purged in the last couple of years because all mine actually have been listened to and sought out. But that's kind of how you do it. You go to sours.com, you log in, you go into the support area, and you file an enhancement request. The great thing is you're always going to come back and be able to see the progress. And if anything happens here, any activity, the product developers look at it or something, you'll see that, which is great. So... Hopefully that answers our questions. We're actually almost 20 minutes over, but um, we really do appreciate you spending the time, and a lot of you have actually stayed on to, to see some more, so we, we really do appreciate it. If you haven't registered for any more of these, go to www.cati.com, find the Design Innovation Month webpage. It should be right off the main page there, and you'll see a calendar of all these events. So feel free to pop back in, get some more information, and Enjoy your weekend.